Hey everybody, welcome to another week here tutorial. We had a wonderful week off or weekend off in Florida. We spent some time on the beach and just relaxed. It was really wonderful. And this week we are working on getting some of the stuff that we had stored in the first and second floor um, down into the basement, the doors, the extra wood and all that since last week we cleaned or two weeks ago we cleaned up the basement so we can get going and moving it all down there. It's always surprising when you actually gather all the wood that you have in all the various rooms stacked up from demolition and you stack it all in one place um, to see actually how much of lumber that is just in the house still. With the current lumber prices, this is obviously a lot of money that was sitting right here. We're gonna keep it stored because there, I'm sure there's gonna be small little framing jobs that we will have to do. Um, as we get down the, the road and so having all that stuff is just nice and we don't have to buy anything. So we have two different sets of doors uh, when it comes to the widths. The doors in the first floor with the transom windows above the doors are a little wider and the doors in the first floor are skinnier um, whereas not all of them are as skinny. So um, I have various uh, widths. They have to go obviously back to their um, original place or at least hopefully go into the original places. Um, all the doors that are off the hinges are either from the first floor or in the second floor. Um, I have a lot of door frames sitting there that are not in the actual framing uh, built in right now because obviously we moved the whole door frame somewhere else or we adjusted, we re-strengthened or we just moved it around. So all of those have frames that are correlating with these, with these doors. Unfortunately, some of the frames are um, a bit um, 
mangled up because obviously these doors are very, very heavy. And um, the screws that they put in um, all no hold so long. Um, old doors often have pretty short hinge screws um, going into the frame. So as the door gets swung 50, 80, 100 years, um, the door just gets heavier and heavier and sags on those, on those screws. And as people probably shut them too hard, slam the door shut, um, it's just a strain on the, on the door hinges. So um, sometimes people have tried to fix it by putting the little pieces of wood in, wood in it and redoing, putting the screw in. Unfortunately, that just mangles up that door frame. Um, they also cut out pieces on the door frames. They put extra locking mechanisms on the top of the door or something or had um, little hangers everywhere. So we're going to try to fill all those holes. We don't really need to put any hangers on it. We will probably refinish all of these doors by sanding them. Some of them, uh, the seams are coming apart. So we might re-glue some of the doors, but these are all going to get fully restored. Um, we do not want paint, there's paint on some of them, so we have to strip the paint. Um, we have to just send them out to the bare wood um, and put a light stain or potentially just a finish on top. Um, not 100% sure yet, depending on what the wood, obviously these are most likely some kind of pine doors, what the wood looks underneath it. Um, we might stain it or not, depending on the room, but in general we want um, full wood doors to actually see that they are full wood or not just painted over. So we will do that. Um, that's obviously a project um, that comes to the, further to the end, but we have it already here. Um, we might um, once in a while set up some area down here or we work on it. I know some people mentioned, why don't we set up the big woodworking machines down here in the, wood, in the workshop? I actually have a plan to do that down in this room um, and also in the uh, room where all the flooring is stored. Unfortunately, right now, with all this stuff down here and trying to actually get the rough finishes done upstairs. Um, I don't have the space to set them up fully. So we will do that as soon as upstairs is a little bit further and we can start working on the flooring. So we will move the flooring wood out and actually finish this as a workshop. So one exciting news that we have is about a year and a half ago, I announced that my parents are supposed to come and help at the house. Um, that was in March of uh, 2020, I believe. And that was right the week before the entire US shut down. No, the travel ban was put in place and all of that stuff happened. So therefore they weren't able to come. We had obviously Clara in the meantime, and it, they haven't really seen, uh, besides on FaceTime, they haven't seen uh, their granddaughter yet. So we are really excited that um, they are finally be able to, uh, are able to come. Um, this month, the travel ban was lifted from the EU. I know we have new variants coming um, and the world is starting to lock down again. It seems like, um, Hopefully we can get around that still here. They will be here for a whole month. They will probably uh, My dad is probably gonna work here um, During the week when I have to go to work and just do some of the touches that you know finish cleaning and getting um, nails screws um, little pieces all out of the walls and then on the weekends and probably um, Fridays um, trying to take off some of extra time here. Um, we will work on this on the house together a little bit more we had obviously bigger plans last year in march where if they would have come a whole month i actually had already plans of taking off 
uh, a substantial amount of time. I unfortunately am very busy at work, so I can't do this this time around. And it's also way too cold to be here every day, but um, we will just try to do as much as we can. And as time permits, as the conditions permit, I have a few other things to do at our house that we live at. Um, we still have to finish there just so that it's more livable until we can move in here. But in general, um, it's they are gonna be here to spend time with family and help us here at the house. A lot of people have been asking what the next step is. Um, I mentioned it already uh, in some of the previous videos, but I will mention it again. Um, we are, the next project that we are gonna do ourselves is going to do the lighting um, or the electricity in the house. Right now I have running electricity, but only at like one room in the parlor in like one corner. Um, everything else is disconnected. I also have one, one high voltage um, connection so that I can run the dust collecting uh, system, but otherwise the entire uh, electricity is off. Um, when I have electricity in a room, I actually always run extension cords, but we want to obviously change that and have electricity throughout the house. Um, so I have a question for you guys. Um, one of the things when we're not home is ensure is if we should be using the big can lights or the smaller ones. Um, that's the first question. What do you guys think in the rooms to actually do direct lighting? Um, we obviously will have um, little chandeliers over um, the dining room table and other places, um, but to actually light the rooms, um, we are going to do the ceiling lights that are sitting inside um, the ceiling, basically, are basically flush with the ceiling, and there, there's two different sizes. There's the smaller ones, I believe they are what, three or four inch, and then there's still the six inch ones, the much larger ones. Um, on our old house, we always had the six inch ones. We liked them, they were big. They put out a lot of light, of course. Um, so for that purpose, they're really good, but also they are much more noticeable because they're, they're bigger. But obviously with the smaller ones, you need less, but you, uh, you need more of them. Um, so. Th so they are more noticeable because they have more spots, but they're much smaller. So that's the first thing, first question, which ones would you guys do, six inch or four inch? And then um, the second question with lighting um, that Julie and I are debating is, I think we should put mood lighting, um, so indirect lighting in most of our rooms in the first floor at least, um, and I'm actually voting also for putting crown molding on the top of the, the walls here everywhere and then and keeping the crown molding not all the way on the top of the ceiling but actually keeping it three four inches away from the ceiling and putting led lighting strips um, all the way around on the outside of the edges of the walls to basically allow us to change the color slightly to in the blue tone or a purple tone or some more orangish just for as a mood color um, to if you want just enough light to be in the room, but you don't, you like watching TV, or you just um, just want to sit there and have um, the chandelier on, but not the full bright um, light from the uh, the wall uh, for, from the ceiling lights. Um, therefore, just having a little bit of li extra lighting. And Julie is not 100% convinced if she wants to have crown molding and or that mood lighting. And I think it would really make the room. Um, but originally this house didn't really have a lot of crown molding. There was a few spots that we found it, but in general this house didn't have crown molding. Um, which was a pretty standard uh, feature for uh, Victorian houses. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't have it here which could also be that um, we had it in most areas, but people were just taking it down because um, it was damaged or something. Um, so I'm not 100% sure why it wasn't there. But um, what do you guys think about doing some crown molding on the top of the walls, at least in the hallway, in the uh, living room, dining room, and in the uh, kitchen area? So what do you guys think about that? And then adding lights on top. Well, I think this is it for this time. Have a great week and I will see you the next time I turn on the camera. Bye.